I'm Dr. Charles Moak and look forward to helping you on your adventure towards becoming more healthy and losing some weight. I'm going to talk to you about the meal plan. I don't like calling it a diet because we almost should think about maybe what we're eating now as a typical American diet is not a good idea. And we're going to put you on some calorie restriction, but going forward, even after you get to your target, you, you should apply some of the same principles. Now we're trying to lose weight, we should look at what happened to get us here in the first place. Obviously there's age, there's different factors that somebody might have had an injury where they're not exercising as much. But really the main thing is that you're consumed more calories than your body burned and you store it as fat. Okay, so if you eat a meal, you don't need the calories, your body will store it as fat to be used later on. Uh, I'm talking to you briefly about the mechanisms to get the weight down and how you have to get your head around a different way of eating. Now let's say you have a orange juice for breakfast. You drink the orange juice, your body picks that sugar up out of the orange juice right away, has what's called a high glycemic load, and it'll realize that you can't, you don't need that much energy this morning in your muscles, so you store it as fat. But if you eat, eat something that had a low glycemic index, such as let's say vegetables, you wouldn't get any rise in sugar, and you just burn those calories off over a period of time. And it's hard to eat vegetables for breakfast, but this is part of the meal plan. I'm going to tell you how to do it. You'll have a card on how to make a smoothie. And the smoothie will be a vegetable smoothie. And if you don't like eating vegetables, you're kind of in trouble because if your diet is not vegetables, it's mostly going to be grains and meat and you'll never lose weight. But one way to make vegetables more palatable is to make them easy to digest, make them taste good. Now if you took a head of kale, or you know, they got a lump of kale, and ate it like as a salad, you really don't chew it long enough to get all the phytonutrients out, so you need to blend it or cook it. And we're going to talk about blending it. So to make a smoothie, you need to get a high, uh, high quality blender. Ones we're recommending are going to be the Vitamix, that's what I have personally, I've got a few of them. Uh, the Ninja, the Magic Bullet, or one of these similar uh, devices. The, the Ninja is less expensive and Consumer Reports gave it the best rating of them. However, we find that doesn't make it quite as juicy. So you need a blender, and this is something you should be buying, a good quality blender. And in your blender, you're going to put in three to four servings of veggies. Okay, so three to four servings of veggies. Now we, give you, give you, we gave you something to use, which is going to be the highest nutritional density of vegetables. It's called the ANDI index, Aggregate Nutritional Density Index. And if you pick the ones that are, are on the pick three or four, kale, collard greens, bok choy, spinach, broccoli, napa cabbage, uh, Swiss chard, etc. These have the highest nutritional density. They're going to give you the most suppression of your appetite because when you eat high nutritional density foods, you're not as hungry. You know, your brain tells you to eat and your stomach tells you to eat. This actually turns out the brain part. And along with veggies, you can put three or four serving veggies, put about a half a serving of something a little sweeter. It could be a sweet vegetable like a carrot or a red pepper or even a healthy berry such as strawberries or blueberries. Tomatoes are technically berries, but we call them, let's say we call them vegetables. So something a little bit sweeter if you need it. You don't necessarily, if you don't need the sweetness, don't do it, but you might experiment. You might find that if you eat just the green vegetables, it might taste a little bit like grass. So if you add some sweet vegetable to it or berries, it'll taste better. But keep a small amount because we don't want sugar. This part of the diet is cutting out the sugars. And you should do have that about twice a day. And you need to do a little experimenting with how much water to put into it. But you should imagine filling up an eight ounce glass that's kind of liquidy. If you make it too thick, it's unpleasant to eat or drink. And that's the only thing you should be drinking during the day other than water or water with uh, tea or something like that. Uh, diet pops and something like that would be okay in this diet, but I don't recommend them because they do uh, drive hunger. What about for your meals? Well, again, if you're going to lose weight, a paradigm shift is necessary in your eating. So for your meals, we have to change our thought from the traditional American diet of eating primarily animal-based foods. Okay, so if you have, you know, a six-ounce piece of chicken and uh, say a handful of broccoli and a handful of, of uh, cabbage, you're basically eating 90% of your calories in the form of animal. Okay, and it's hard to lose weight when you're eating a bunch of animal foods. And I know there was a big trend towards the Atkins diet where people would eat this heavy oils and creams and animal meats. Well, look what happens with that. 
it works short time and it fails long term and it's certainly not healthy. So I'm not recommending that you eat a bunch of chicken or a bunch of uh, you know, low fat meats. I'm recommending that you actually back off on the amount of eat meat. And there's, there's another video called uh, Nutrition 101. You can Google that or we can send it to you. It explains about the protein content of vegetable versus meat. There's actually plenty of proteins in meats. I'm sorry, plenty of proteins in vegetables. You don't need to eat much meat. But you should imagine that you would be eating small amounts of lean meats, maybe two to four ounces, okay? Two to four ounces of lean meat. Now, what are lean meats? Well, chicken with the skin on it is clearly not lean. You're probably going to fry it. Chicken that is just a chicken breast that's broiled is lean. Okay, so we'll say chicken breast. And we'll call it white meat chicken breast is leaner than dark meat chicken breast. Okay, so that's, that's the lean meat. Uh, what about beef? You like to eat beef. Well, there is one lean beef. It's actually an extremely lean beef. It's called the Piedmontese. So a Piedmontese is a, if it's certified Piedmontese, and it's what's called two copies, meaning both the mother's a Piedmontese cow and the father's a Piedmontese cow. These are cows that are based, that actually came from northern Italy. Uh, they have less fat than skinless chicken breast and more omega-3 fat, which is the healthy fat, than Atlantic-grade salmon. So actually that's a good beef that you can eat, but you need to get it from the right place. The place locally has it is called Monty's. Monty's in Royal Oak, so uh, they've got ground meat that you could put into your meal or you can buy steaks or you got to buy them in advance. There might be other places as well. When you go to a restaurant and get Piedmontese, it's generally not grass-fed or two copies. It's, it's like not a true Piedmontese, so if you're going to get it, you know, make it yourself. And that's a, that would be an acceptable meat to eat. For our staff, we get the Piedmontese ground up and cut it with quinoa and it makes it actually go further, so it seems like you're eating like six or eight ounces, but only eating two ounces along with vegetables. And that's actually a 200 calorie meal that's very fulfilling. So chicken and Piedmontese would be good examples of lean meats. White meat turkey could be as well. Uh, fish, so if you eat fish, most fish is lean. Even the fattier fish like salmon, I think that's acceptable for the purpose of this diet because you're getting the healthy omega-3s, the type of fat that you need. Uh, you're better off getting wild caught salmon than farm-raised salmon, but either one's okay. And stay away from predator fish, like swordfish and shark, uh, tuna, because they have more mercury. Okay, canned tuna has been shown to have low mercury, but, but mer tuna that you buy at the store has got mercury in it because they eat other little fish eat the mercury. So I'd stay away from the mercury-containing fish, but salmon and cod and halibut, those are super fish, those are good to eat. You try to get wild ones. Um, egg whites, you know, most of the calories from the eggs and the egg yolk. I'm not saying egg yolks are unhealthy, but when you're trying to lose weight, you don't need those calories. It's too calorie dense. So if you take the egg yolk out, just eat the whites, you're getting something to eat that's, that tastes good, and you make that with your vegetables. Okay, so egg whites are okay. So lean meats and fish and egg whites should be really your only sources of animal food. Stay away from cheese and milk products. Obviously, this is loaded with calories. Then there's veggies and legumes. Now, veggies are all the vegetables that you know, and you have the list uh, that's the highest nutritional density food, I'd like you to primarily cook with those. And then you might add in like lentils or peas or beans to give some density, the legumes. And even though you might perceive those as being kind of a lot of carbs, they're actually slow carbs. They don't turn into sugar in your body. So lean meats, fish, egg whites, vegetables, and legumes. And then of course making your green smoothie in the morning. And that should be your meal. So try to eat two green smoothies, Make your meals and bring them to, to work. Uh, we're working on a program right now with Vince and Joe's where the food will be available for you to purchase from them that's going to have very low calories. Right now we're kind of trying to iron out the details, but my staff is eating extremely healthy, low-calorie mood meals that are about 250 to 300 calories that are very, very fulfilling. Eat a couple of those a day, a couple of green smoothies, you're eating very low calories and they're full. What happens when you get hungry? You know, people ask me, can I have nuts? Well, I mean, you can, but if you have nuts, you're eating a huge amount of calories in a small amount of food. You really should focus on eating the vegetables. Vegetables fill your stomach up, and have all the fiber that you need, and it'll make you full, okay? What food to stay away from? Don't drink calories. So with the exception of the green smoothie, your drinks should be calorie free. So the green smoothie, which is the vegetables, is fine. But otherwise, don't drink milk. You obviously don't need milk as an adult. You know, milk's designed for 
babies to grow into big babies. You know, you think about the cow's milk is designed to take a small little calf and turn into a big cow. So we should not be eating that as adults. Okay, so no drinking calories. Uh, alcohol is okay. I would pick the low sugar alcohol, such as wine or mixed drinks with like a like a let's say for example a vodka and club soda has very low calories, even though alcohol has some calories in it, versus say a margarita. Okay, so drinking is okay, but I do it in moderation. Uh, and do it maybe more with meals. Uh, don't drink calories otherwise. Uh, stay away from grains, bread, rice, cereal, pretzels, corn. Okay, you might say, well, the grains are on the food pyramid, the USDA food pyramid. Well, yeah, but it's nonsense. This is something that was developed 40 years ago in order to try to get the Farm Belt uh, senators some, say, some traction with their with their with their constituents. We don't need 11 servings of grains a day, and that's what it says in a food pyramid. If you do that, you're gonna get heavy, okay? So grains, I just cut them out all together when you're trying to lose weight. Uh, stay away from milk products. Okay, milk products are designed to make, again, calves grow into cows. We should not be eating that. Uh, stay away from fruits. Okay, I told you when you do your green smoothie, you might put strawberries or blueberries. I'd cut it off there, okay? Put that in your veggie smoothie, but don't eat them routinely. Fruits turn into sugar a little bit too quickly. Uh, no dressing. Okay, dressing, if you eat, let's say you make a salad and you take some kale and arugula and, and uh, iceberg lettuce and you put peppers and onions and tomatoes and carrots on it, it's going to taste really good. Maybe you sprinkle a little vinegar on it, but if, as soon as you put on oil or a dressing, 90% of the calorie content from that salad now became the dressing. Okay, it might be a creamy dressing or oily dressing. Now you're eating a bunch of calories. You've tripled the calories in your, veg, in your salad and you didn't increase your fullness at all. Okay, so stay away from dressing, stay away from sauces. Something like salsa might be okay, but in general, sauces are extremely calorie rich. What about pasta? Stay away from pasta. Okay, it's typically gonna be a grain. Even if you get the so-called healthy pastas that are made out of lentils and stuff, they basically process them in such a way that you can digest them easy. Pasta is gonna help you keep your weight on. Getting rid of pasta will help you get the weight off. And stay away from potatoes. And again, I'm not saying potatoes are unhealthy. I'm not saying any of these foods are unhealthy in moderation. When you're trying to lose weight, you must avoid them, okay? So potatoes, a lot of calories for a small amount of density. So again, we're going to lean meats, egg whites, fish, uh, vegetables, and legumes, green smoothies, and cutting out everything else. Okay, and this will require you to take your you know, lunch to work. At our office, we do supply the food for our staff. Maybe you can get your employer to do that. You'll be a more productive staff if, you, if everybody you know, is, is healthy. So that's the basics of the meal plan. Not saying this is going to be easy, uh, but it's a paradigm shift. And once you've made yourself shift by really immersing yourself in eating only healthy foods, you're getting the Piedmontese steak that's grass-fed. Very healthy. It's actually the only red meat that's endorsed by American Health Associ American Heart Association. Let's say free-range chicken over regular chicken. Maybe it's not worth the money. That's what my, we have in my family. Wild fish and then mostly vegetables. Does it matter if it's organic or not? Not really. Certain things are probably makes a big difference. So that's your personal choice. And then legumes. And I think the green smoothie is a really big key of this because if you have that in the morning, normally you might skip breakfast or you might not have time to make something healthy and have a, like a protein bar or something like that. That's not gonna help you lose weight, okay? Let's bring me another point. The protein powder, do not put protein powder in your smoothie, okay? Protein powder was made to make people grow. Okay, so if you're trying to lose weight, we don't want you eating something that's supposed to make you grow. And this idea about it building muscle mass, there's a very limited circumstances in a very limited group of people where protein powder will help them grow muscle. It's not something that's entering a weight loss program. Okay, you need very little animal protein or protein in general. For women, about 50 grams is more than enough. And you get that with one piece of meat a day and even some vegetables. Okay, so change the way you're eating and get the weight off. How many calories a day? Well, if you eat the green smoothies and two or three of the vegetable meals with some lean meats, you're gonna be eating between 600 and 1,000 calories. And for most people, that's gonna be enough. If your weight loss is going slower, you might back off on the, on the portion size and back off on the frequency of meals. But in general, I think you should be increasing the vegetables and decreasing the meat and looking at the foods that you're eating that you might be you know, cheating. Okay, and that's gonna be the reason that you're, you're stumbling. Okay, so healthy foods. What about when you go out for dinner? Well, first off, put your hands up when the bread plate comes around, get rid of that. Pick something that's similar we talked about. And then of course you're gonna cut your food in half. So they're gonna bring you, let's say, chicken breast, get it without the skin, try to get it just broiled, maybe cut it in half and throw half it away or give it to your significant other. 
and then order vegetables steamed because normally they're going to saute them and that's going to be more fattening. Uh, what about cheating? You know, cheating periodically is okay, but you really have to restrict it to there's a wedding or there's an event at your family's you know, picnic or something like this. When you're cheating, you're going to be eating foods that are maybe not on these, this list. You can't make a smoothie there, but you still should really focus on finding the things in that food line that are the most acceptable. And that's a diet plan. You take that along with the supplements that we're giving you, along with the injections that you're getting, you will definitely lose weight. It's impossible not to. Thank you very much.